Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar titled Deep Dive into Hybrid API Management with W3 Cloud Micro Gateway. Today we will talk about Hybrid API Management with W3 Cloud Micro Gateway, key features and deployment options mainly. Also we will have a short demo with use case and finally there will be a Q&A session. Before we get started, let me introduce presenters for today. Presenting myself, Erandi Kanepala. I'm a software engineer in WC2 Cloud development team. Also, we have Vidranga Gunaratna hosting this webinar with me, who is also a software engineer in WC2 Cloud development team. So let's get started. Agenda for today is about hybrid API management, WC2 Cloud Micro Gateway. We'll basically discuss the overview deployment key features and API grouping feature, which is the latest addition to WC2 Cloud Micro Gateway. And we will talk about deployment options, multi-cloud deployment and deploying in containers. Also, we will have a short demo with the use case. And finally, we'll show you the Micro Gateway performance results and there will be a Q&A session, so you can present your questions there. Okay. What is hybrid API management? You might have already heard about API management and also about hybrid API management. That might be the reason why you are here with us today, joining to this webinar. Anyway, let me walk you through a very brief introduction to what is hybrid API management and why you need it and how it works with WC2 Cloud. So before coming to hybrid model, there were traditional models, on-prem model and pure cloud model. When it comes to traditional on-prem model, as advantages, you have high control of it and low latency in API calls. Also, it was easier for integration, but as disadvantages, buyers get high total cost of ownership and they have to put a big maintenance effort. Also, it is harder to add external parties, higher external security risks were there. So that's why after considering those factors, organizations move to cloud model. So when it comes to traditional pure cloud model, of course, it's very cost effective and you just have to buy subscriptions which fit your exact requirements and easy to maintain. I would rather say no maintenance effort at all because on behalf of you, your service provider does all the patching and upgrading, security enhancements, those kind of related things. But in that case, some might face latency issues and your backend might need to be exposed to the internet with the VPN or whitelisting kind of a mechanism. So due to those factors today, organizations are moving towards a hybrid solution because this hybrid solution brings the best of both worlds. So as the definition says, hybrid API management allows you to deploy gateways in private infrastructure. Private infrastructure can be anything like your own data center, private cloud, or any private infrastructure, while other parts of the platform reside in public cloud offerings. That means um, common used API management infrastructure, such as management user interfaces, developer portals, and analytics dashboards, this can be deployed in cloud while your gateways sign on premise. So why do you need hybrid API management? If you seek this point in a nutshell as key advantages, it will reduce total cost of ownership while giving more freedom to the buyers. You will have less maintenance effort while getting your own freedom with the gateway. Also, it reduces network overhead and latency of traffic for close proximity services and uh, it will ensure enhanced security, compliance to government regulations and various industry standards since you don't need to go for solutions like VPN or mutual SSL or IP whitelisting kind of things because your backend won't be exposed to the internet. So with that, let's see how it works in WC2 Cloud. So basically, micro gateway can be deployed within the customer network. As I already said, that can be your data center, private cloud, or a VPC provided by any cloud service provider like AWS or Google. And then you can create and publish APIs, 
use our developer portal to generate keys and get subscribed to those APIs and then invoke APIs. Also, you can view analytics as well. So those kind of management infrastructure are in WC2 API Cloud. So after configuring micro gateway to run with our WC2 Cloud, gateway automatically connects to the cloud and it pull API configs. And it sends usage statistics that, that is kind of a summarized data to the cloud periodically. So that is how this basically works with our cloud. Now let's see a diagram. So actually this is a very high level diagram for WS2 Cloud Micro Gateway. I have numbered up to six here, basically mentioned the key steps. So let's go one by one. First one, API publishing. So using our publisher, you can create your APIs with policies, visibility restrictions enabled, and you can add message mediators, and then you can just publish the API. And the second point, uh, configure micro gateway. So you can just go to micro gateway homepage and download our product and easily configure it and run it. I will show you how to do that later. And uh, next, sync in API configs. So after running the micro gateway, it will sync the configs of the APIs required to be deployed in the micro gateway. And uh, next, the fourth point, so runtime traffic hits, that means API consumers send API requests to micro gateway. So your runtime traffic hits our cloud micro gateway, sorry, uh, WSA2 micro gateway. And the fifth point, authenticating users, that simply means Micro gateway authenticates consumers and key validation is done by calling the key managers in WC2 Cloud. So here we have a caching mechanism for key validation in micro gateway, so it will reduce latency. If authentication is successful, corresponding API request will be served after calling the corresponding backend services. Then the last step, analytics. So micro gateway uploads usage statistics to WS2 Cloud periodically. All the analytics data is visible in the cloud, so in publisher dashboard. So that's about the high level or picture of our cloud with the micro gateway. Now I'll quickly show you how to configure a micro gateway. Okay, uh, let's visit our publisher. Is the publisher homepage. Here you can say micro gateways button. Just click it, it will navigate you to the micro gateway homepage. In the bottom, you can say download micro gateway or use Docker image. According to your use case, you can use either Docker image or download the distribution. I will just click download micro gateway. So it started downloading. It will take some time. So I have already downloaded one and I'll go with that for this webinar. Here you see all the instructions for the initialization part is listed here. So this is my organization key. Let's go to the terminal. Uh, I'm in the distribution home bin, so here there's cloud init.sh, let's run it. Give the organization key and the email. Webinar is at mailinage.com and my password. And it asks you whether you want to configure the micro gateway with the label. For the moment, let's say no. Okay, it has been configured successfully. So we can just start the WSO2 server.sh but it will take a couple of minutes to start. So meanwhile, let's go here. Refresh the page. Uh, 
Okay. Yes, it. So you say still the status is offline because uh, service is still starting. So under API group, you see all APIs. That simply means your gateway is uh, gateway have been configured for a specific label. So all the APIs are deployed here. And in the metadata section, you see environment metadata pre-configured ones like Java version, user home. So you can configure more in our properties file. And there's this last updated time. So that is it and it's simply as that. So you can just download our product and run it. Let's move with the slides. Okay. So key features. We will briefly explain most of them here, but some of the features we will explain in detail with next slides. So security comes first. API invocations are authenticated using Auth2, which is the default behavior of WSO2 APIM and API Cloud. And uh, if you want, the JWT authentication can be configured optionally. From the consumer side, no change is introduced to the API invocation flow, except for the change of the gateway URL in the invocation request. That's the only difference user can see in the request. And uh, when it comes to the communication between the micro gateway and the cloud, so it's a secured one. Next point, rate limiting. So you can enable throttling for a given API, also for a given application. This can be configured when creating the API and applications. Also, when you are subscribing to an API using your application, you can use defined throttling tier to get it subscribed. And the next point, custom mediations. So you can add custom mediation policies and modify messages. Basically, modify headers and payloads of inbound or outbound or for fall requests by adding new sequences. When it comes to analytics, you can get all the required analytics from our publisher dashboard. So because we have covered a wide range of custom use cases and design our analytics graphs, so basically, it gives API usages, application usages, fault invocations, latency, throttling, all those stats are there. You can just visit our dashboard and see. Next, selective API deployment. So this is the labeling feature. Using labeling feature, you can create a label and attach that label to APIs. With that, you can group your APIs and configure micro gateway to deploy that specific set of API in that micro gateway. And uh, multi-cloud deployment and deploying in containers. So WSO2 cloud micro gateway can be deployed in any infrastructure service. And also it is container friendly. We will demonstrate this with, the, with our next demo. With that, I'll move on to this feature, selective deployment of APIs with labels. So WSO2 API Cloud allows you to add labels to group APIs together. If you have a business requirement where you want to group a set of APIs together, first you need to create a label and then you need to attach it to all the APIs that you want to group together. For an example, let's say uh, we create a label called HR, giving the name HR by visiting our micro gateway homepage and then we attach that label to all the HR related APIs when creating the API. Or if there's an already published API, you can just edit the API and attach that. And when creating the label, you have to configure the micro gateway URL, basically the host name. You can um, add multiple host names depending on your use case. When you go to micro gateway dashboard, it shows configured URLs for each micro gateway and after initialization of the micro gateways. And uh, if you visit our developer portal store, in the store overview and console, all at this, those sections also, the API details are visible. So the next point is micro gateways can be configured with a label. So you can use that already defined label to configure a micro gateway. In that case, only APIs with that particular label get deployed and also will be seen periodically. And uh, then that's the ability to configure environment and custom metadata. You might have seen already, I showed in the demo, 
there's pre-configured meta environment metadata in our properties file apart from that you can define other environment related metadata and custom metadata such as this project is owned by this division that kind of data can be configured okay mm, with that i'll quickly show you how to configure the micro gateway with the label for that let's go to this manage labels so here click add label give the label name let's give it hr and whatever description hr project and here you need to add host uh, let's give okay already given one is available https mygateway.com let's save it okay this is my label and let's go to publisher so i have this already created and already published countries api i'm going to edit it in this section under micro gateways all the labels you have created so far will be listed so you just want to tick the label which is related to your api say when publish it will republish your api so i will navigate to the terminal i go back i have to remove this config log because it contains some of the configurations related to previous configuration okay move to bin run cloudin.sh let's give the organization key webinar org and the email and the password so do you want to configure the macro deal with the label yes with the label name Okay, it's successful. Let's navigate to the dashboard. If I go here, you might be able to see this API group. It says HR APIs. That simply means APIs related to HR label will only be deployed here. And the URL we configured for that label is visible here so status is offline because i didn't start the server it takes some time to start so that how it is and uh, it's very easy to configure and run for a label as well so let's move on to slide next we have deployment options and we will do another demo with the deployment options and we'll talk about performance results so with that i'm handing over the webinar session to Vidguranga. thank you Right. Thank you, Irandi. And hello, everyone. I'm Vidranga. And let us understand the multiple deployment capabilities that you have at your disposal when using the WS2 API micro gateway. First one is multi cloud deployments. That is, you have the freedom to set up the gateway distribution in any of the infrastructure as a service vendors. This provides the capability to be free from vendor lock in and also provides a better guarantee on availability of the services to consumers. The main reason for this versatility is because setting up the deployment is extremely simple due to facts such as you do not need an external database and it follows a pull model where the APIs are pulled from cloud to the on-prem gateway. By utilizing a gateway that can be deployed anywhere and managed by a central API management platform, the API owners have a central point of management as well as a decentralized distribution of gateways. Next is deploying in containers and on virtual machines. As we all know, 
containers have gained a lot of traction when it comes to cloud related technologies and with orchestration systems like kubernetes coming into play modern applications are built with containerization in mind therefore i'm glad to say that the micro gateway distribution is container ready and we have documentation guiding you to deploy a gateway distribution on Kubernetes using Helm. Right. This diagram gives a general overview of a multi-cloud deployment of the gateway. Here, we have a hypothetical scenario where the micro gateways are deployed in Google Cloud Platform, on AWS, and on any other data center, which can be any private infrastructure. As you can see, a majority of the API management components such as API Publisher, Developer Portal, Key Manager, Traffic Manager, and Analytics is handled in the cloud. And the gateways communicate with the cloud to sync APIs and configurations and to upload analytics data. Other than that, all the API traffic from the users are received by the gateway and forwarded to the backend service having no interaction with the cloud. Let me focus your attention towards the AWS private cloud deployment diagram. As you can see, there are two gateways deployed and each of them have a label applied and both these gateways are configured to an internal backend service. With the applied labels, each gateway will only pull the APIs attached with that particular label from cloud. When looking at API invocations, the top gateway receives external traffic through a firewall that can be external users accessing the APIs of the organization. And the other receives traffic from internal users inside the private cloud, so their API calls are not exposed to the internet. Right, now let us see a demo on how these gets put into a real world scenario. For the purpose of this demo, let's assume that an organization has two projects. There are two separate projects with different use cases. One project has an application which can be used to obtain geographical information such as countries, capital, and so on. The other project has an application that would be used as a utility application. And in this case, we would use it to convert an XML payload to JSON. What I would like to highlight here is that the first project is a traditional one where a monolithic architecture is used and it is deployed in virtual machines provided by an infrastructure vendor. The other application is focused towards the microservices architecture where the deployment is set up in a Kubernetes cluster. Both these applications consume APIs through the deployed micro gateway instances. Right. The diagram that you can see here in the slide gives a general overview of the demonstration setup. We have two highly available deployments, one on AWS EKS, which is a Kubernetes deployment, and the other is a G Cloud virtual machine deployment. The high availability deployment comprises of two micro gateway instances fronted by a load balancer. If you focus your attention to the diagram, you will see that there are two labels applied to each deployment, namely project dev and project navigator. With the application of these labels, we categorize APIs according to projects and the gateways will only pull APIs that are under its label. This gives the users flexibility to have separate deployments for separate projects, although all the APIs are managed in a single organization. In this demo, I will show you the APIs that we have published and the labels configured to the APIs in the API store, the deployments done in virtual machines and on Kubernetes, the configured micro gateways in the cloud dashboard. I will also invoke APIs in each deployment and you will see the logs of the gateway nodes where the inbound request and the outbound response gets displayed. Finally, I will show you some analytics data of the two APIs that we invoked. Right. Let's move on to the demo.
what you are seeing here in the screen is the API publisher and here we have two APIs used by the two projects that I mentioned earlier. The first API is the geolocation API which gives the information about countries and so on and the next one is the payload transformation API which will simply convert an XML payload to a JSON or vice versa. Next, we'll move on to the Manage Labels tab so we can see the two labels that we have configured for the two projects. And uh, as you can see here, we have the project dev label and the project navigator label and the corresponding host names pointing to each deployment. So the first deployment, first host name points to the Kubernetes deployment and the second host name points to the Google Cloud deployment. This is the API developer portal and we are looking at the overview of one API. Down here, you can see one of the labels attached to the API. And this is the other API on the developer portal and you can see the other project dev label has been attached to this API. Right, now let's take a look at the deployment. This is the deployment that we have done on virtual machines in Google Cloud. So we have two micro gateway instances and a load balancer instance. Next, I will show you the Kubernetes deployment. So same as the yeah, deployment that we have done on Google Cloud, the Kubernetes deployment too has an Nginx as the load balancer and two micro gateway instances running on two pods. So we'll use the kubectl get services command to list the load balancer service. So as you can see here, we have the load balancer service and if I execute the command to get the pods, here we have the two pods which are running the two micro gateway instances. Right. So here in this micro gateway dashboard, you can see all the active micro gateways. We have four online right now and they correspond to the deployed gateways that I showed a few seconds back. Here you can see that two gateways are grouped by a single label and you have the corresponding host name. These labels will make sure that only the APIs with that label gets pulled to the gateway. In general, from this dashboard, we can identify which gateways are active and how the deployment is grouped. Right, now let's invoke some APIs and see how everything works. First, I will, uh, first I have been, I have connected to the two virtual machine instances on Google Cloud that is available in the top two tabs so i'll tail the so let me connect back to the instance right we are connected to the first instance so let me tail the logs of the first micro gateway deployment And so I'll tell the logs of the second deployment as well. The point of doing this is so that you can uh, see the response uh, getting printed on the logs once the request receives the gateway.
right so we have the logs ready and now i'll send a request uh, to this uh, virtual machine deployment so as you can see here from the host name i'm pointing the request to the gcloud instances and uh, here i'm calling the geolocation api and asking the details about the country us right so as you can see we got a successful response uh, with the details of the country that we requested and we can see that the request was hit to the first api uh, micro gateway instance so let me make another request and that request got served from the second micro gateway instance now if you remember we had two apis published in our publisher portal uh, but uh, we have assigned two separate labels for the two apis now if i send another request to the same virtual machine deployment and if i invoke the the other api the tra transformation api we'll see what happens so we got an error saying the requested resource is not available so that is expected because the other api does not get synced to the google cloud deployment because it had another label right so let's move on to the demonstration of our kubernetes cluster so uh, i'll use the kubectl logs command to tail the logs of the two micro gateway instances running on the kubernetes pods So the same way I'll send a request. Now, uh, this deployment has been synced with the transformation API because we assigned that particular label to it. And as you can see from the host name, we are directing our request towards the uh, Kubernetes deployment. Now I have sent the request, waiting for a couple of seconds for the response to get back and yes we got a successful response uh, what it did was it converted the xml payload that we sent in the request and returned us with a json payload and from the logs i hope you saw that the request was served by the first micro gateway instance right so uh, now that we have showed uh, some invocations of the APIs, let's move on to some. Uh, let's move on to view some analytics information. Right. So this is our analytics dashboard on the publisher portal. And as you can see here, we have this geolocation API and the payload transformation API, and we have the analytics information uh, regarding the API invocations. Apart from this, from the left side menu, you can uh, you have access to multiple analytics data uh, regarding APIs and applications, uh, users, and so on. So. Uh, with this demonstration, I hope you got an understanding of how the micro gateway scenario works. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask during the Q&A and we are happy to answer them. Right. So let's look at some performance tests that we have performed using the micro gateway. These tests were run on a machine with a single core and two gigs of memory. The blue line indicates the test that we ran against a pass-through API where the request and responses is simply forwarded without any intermediate processing. The red line shows the test that we ran using a mediation policy where we used an XML to JSON converter to convert the response. As you can see in the pass-through scenario, the gateway can handle around 800 requests per second with 50 concurrent users and at around 280 requests per second with 500 concurrent users. 
in the mediation scenario the number would be around 460 requests per second with 50 users and around 210 requests per second with 500 users right so we have come to the end of our webinar and uh, let's quickly recap what we discussed today we looked into what hybrid api management is and how it works in wso2 cloud we had we looked at a high level overview of the wso2 cloud micro gateway and demonstrated how to configure the gateway we had a discussion about the key features and about the selective deployment of apis which is our latest feature we discussed about multi-cloud deployments and deploying on containers and virtual machines. Next, we had a small demo with a use case where we invoked two APIs in two separate deployments. Finally, we looked at some figures regarding the performance of the micro gateway. You can find further information on hybrid API management if you visit the WSO2 cloud documentation. We will be sharing the slide deck for this webinar on SlideShare, and you can find the entire webinar in our WSO2 library. If you do have any concerns, doubts, or anything, you can always contact us at any time by dropping a mail to cloud at wso2.com. Next, we will open up the Q&A session to answer some questions. Okay, uh, we have a couple of questions. Let's go one by one. Are custom mediation policies supported? Yes, you can engage any custom mediation policies to the API request, response, and error clause. Right, so we have another question asking, what is the minimum cost of running a hybrid solution with WSO2? So a fully highly available solution can be implemented starting from third thousand dollars per annum depending on your workload okay uh, we have another question what kind of setup is required to sync data between private cloud internal or in wso2 cloud so the micro gateway follows a pool model where gateway initiate the connection from the gateway to the cloud as a result opening outbound traffic from the gateway to the cloud is sufficient so no inbound connection is needed for this case right so we have another question uh, it says aws api gateway provides a scalable solution how does wso2 differentiates here in the offering so uh, aws just provides an api gateway but the wso2 api cloud provides a comprehensive api management platform including a developer portal when it comes to WSO2 Gateway, it is also horizontally scalable when deployed either on VMs or containers. There are many other features such as MTLS and etc. So there's another question. Is the number of micro gateway deployable limited by the subscription level? No, uh, the answer is no. And we have another question. Uh, how easy it is to maintain it so it's very easy we have showed you that you in the demo and you can just download the distribution and configure it and run. and there's another question subscription is required to deploy in production environments yes subscription is required this is uh, this is given for the paid years so if you need to know about our pricing and related things, please contact us. We will provide you more details. So oh, there's a question asking. Uh, oh, yes, there's a question asking, what are the next steps in the roadmap for the micro gateway? So we have actually some steps in the micro gateway. One is like uh, we are plan to go with steo integration and uh, more fine grain and it extent of things we will publish about those things in the future in the near future so with that i think that brings us to a close of the webinar and uh, we hope you found the webinar useful 
If you have any questions and anything more to clarify, please feel free to contact us after this webinar. Thank you very much and have a nice day.